Welcome to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Let's join our host, Melvin York. Well, hello, everyone. This is Melvin York, and you're listening to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Looks like fall has finally has graced us with its presence. It's coming in. The temperatures are cooler here in the Piedmont of North Carolina. We have experienced some dry conditions, so leaves are starting to fall, even though they're not turning colors that much. So hopefully we'll get some much-needed rain here in a few days. But I'd like to bring up some of the things that we need to be doing for preparing for our fall gardens, some of the things that you may not think of. And again, I want to remind you that I do encourage you to keep a gardening journal from what you do from one year to the next. That way it gives you a chance to look back and see when you planted, what you planted, how it performed. Do you want to make changes for the next year? What tasks you accomplished? during the garden season. So it's a real good thing to have, and it kind of gives you a quick where you can thumb back through and say, okay, yes, I use that. Because I found the older I get, the more my memory is not as well as that journal is where I can flip back to it and look. So let's talk about some of the things that you need to be doing for fall preparation. As I spoke of to start with, the leaves are falling now, and those can be somewhat of a job or it can be a blessing. One of the best mulches made is leaf mulch. So if you do your own composting, make sure that you do gather those leaves up, put those in the bin, turn them every so often with a pitchfork or however you use to turn your compost bin with. And then you can actually leave it like that, add some straw, grass clippings, some of the other things that you usually add to your compost bin, but leaf mulch is a great source for your raised beds, for your gardening, and for mulching all together. Now, speaking of mulching, that's some things that we need to look at too. A lot of us are going to be planting new bulb beds for spring flowers. Our bulbs was now the time to be planting those for our spring flowers, like tulips, daffodils, just any of those type bulbs that are spring bloomers, we need to go ahead and prepare the beds for those. Make sure that we do plant them at the right height. You don't want to go too deep on bulbs, but then full layer. And if you don't have mulch, you can use those leaves. And let's don't go too deep with them, but you want to give them a good layer of mulch to protect them from the freezes in the winter time. Also, if you've planted any new shrubs, any perennials, it's good. So make sure that they are mulched in also. So that's one of the things that we want to get done for fall chores. Also pruning. Pruning is a big thing that most people don't like to do. And I do know I've heard a lot of people say, well, I don't want to prune it down because, you know, I don't want to lose the height or I don't want to lose the shape of it. You don't have to lose the height or the shape because pruning only encourages new growth. So therefore, your plant will be fuller, more of a lush look to it, and it does make it healthy. While you're doing that, you also want to make sure uh, you look and you scout for any disease that may be there where you can treat that and take care of that in your pruning. If you are thinking about fall planting for some new shrubs, new trees, fruit trees, fruit bushes, now will be the time to get those in the ground. Again, plant those, but make sure you do mulch those. And again, as I spoke of, we're in dry conditions here in the Piedmont of North Carolina. So you do want to make sure, even though it's fall, it's cool, those plants get watered at least once a week until winter time comes. So you want to make sure that new plant gets its moisture, that it's got a good layer of mulch around it to protect it through the winter. Then next spring, it will take off those roots grow like crazy. I do know that a lot of people are thinking about yards at this time. Now, I know Some people like to fertilize early in the spring. I like to fertilize my lawn at this time of year. And for the biggest reason is, even though the tops of most of your fescues, most of your grasses go dormant outside of the rye varieties in the wintertime, the root system is alive and well. And that's the time that it's building and being fed so that it can produce that great looking lawn that we'll enjoy all next year. So I like to give my yard a little bit of fertilizer, but always, 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 before I fertilize or see if it needs lime, make sure that you pull a soil sample in different areas, send it off to your extension service in whichever state you're in, and get a sample of that, and they will send you back a report 
letting you know how much fertilizer you need, which one of the nutrients you need most. Maybe you only need nitrogen, no phosphorus, but it will give you all of that. Maybe you need lime. It will tell you how much lime that you need for what type of grass that you're growing so they can be at its optimum efficiency. Now, if you've never done a soil test before, make sure that you do go to your local extension office. They will give you a kit. It has all the instructions, how to take the samples, and how to mail those off. Usually, it's a free service, but at the very worst, I think in North Carolina, at certain periods of time, it may be a $4 charge and it takes longer. And that may be from November through February, and I'm guessing on that, but I know there's four or five months in there. But to go ahead and get those taken now and because you may be applying fertilizer you don't need you may be applying lime you don't need and there's no need to spend the money and the time and put that on if you don't need it so these are some of the things you're looking at go through and look and check your seeds for the next year what seeds do you have make sure there are heirloom varieties right now stores still have some seeds i've seen on the shelves for sale each year it seems like seeds are getting harder and harder to get of the heirloom variety so go ahead and it's perfectly fine to buy this year's seed to plant for next year go ahead and get those and buy them while they're on the shelves because we don't know what's going to be there for next year there may be a shortage of one variety or, or several varieties so go ahead and get those purchased now because some of the seeds that we start early all your cold weather crops usually around christmas time we're starting Starting our seeds, we're sowing those for our transplants, which can be sown in the very, very early spring. So you want to look at all of that also. Now, another thing that you might want to think about too, when we talk about planting trees and shrubs, maybe some berry bushes. That would be something that's good. Blueberries, got raspberries, blackberries, grapevines, muscadine vines. These are all delicious fruits uh, or berries that can be saved, harvested. They can make jams out of them. You can freeze them. Yeah, or you can use them, you know, naturally off the vine. And you trust me on this, the flavor on these are much, much better than what you would usually buy at the store. Now, we are lucky enough in this area that we do have some pick-your-own places for blueberries, some for muscadine, some for grapes. And we do have pick-your-own strawberries. Strawberries right now is a excellent choice to plant. Make sure when you do plant these strawberries, you where I kind of raise the bed up a little bit so that water doesn't stand in it. Also, make sure that the crown of the strawberry, and that's the very center part, you'll see it looks like a little velvet leaf. Do not cover that up with soil. Make sure that it stays out. Now, the strawberry will die down a little bit. That crown will stay alive in the winter. And when spring comes, your strawberries will start putting on fruit quicker than the ones that you do plant in the springtime. So if you can find strawberry plants now, that's a good thing to do also. So those are just some of the things that you want to look at for fall. Make sure that you pull, refresh those raised beds with new soil, get those in shape for next year. I like to put a cover crop on one if I'm not planting a cold weather crop, and there's several different things you can use for that. You can use annual rye grass, winter peas, is just a variety of different things if you want to do a little research on there. And what you do is in about the last of January, 1st of February, turn that green matter over with a spade, chop it up well, and that's green nitrogen, and that's free across to you. And it also does help to keep the soil aerated when you're doing that. Again, once that's happened, you've turned that over, send off a soil test to see if you need to apply in line, maybe some gypsum, but it does make a difference. Well, this is just a few things that I wanted to mention to you today that you need to get ready for for your fall season. There's many more. We're going to talk more about that here in the next few weeks. Christmas is coming up. I'm going to give you some ideas on what to buy those gardeners for. Christmas. I know everybody likes to buy everyone the perfect present. And if you've got gardeners on your list, trust me, we'll give you some hints and some ideas that will make them very, very happy. We do thank you so much for listening to our podcast. You can go to our website, which is www.daddypeats.com. And if you'll click on our podcast or the archives, you can see many topics there that you may have an interest in. Also, there's a place on there for you to leave us a comment or ask us a question. We will answer those. And while you're on the page, sign up for our free newsletter. It's an email newsletter. We don't sell your email address. We keep it between you and us. And we send it out 
every month that gives you garden tips. It also gives you some great recipes. I've had a lot of people comment on how wonderful the recipes are, how they use them, and they certainly enjoy those. Also, while you're there, click on our products and the product uses. Look at the different products that we offer at Daddy Pete's to help you with your garden, with your landscape, with all of your green needs. We can help you with those. So check on those. We also have a store locator where you can buy our products at a store near you. Well, I certainly enjoyed the time this morning. I hope everyone has a great weekend because this is Friday the 13th. And uh, stay safe today, and we'll see you next time at Gardening with Daddy Pete. Thank you for joining today's Gardening with Daddy Pete. You can check out our website at daddypeets.com for additional gardening tips and our podcast at gardeningwithdaddypete.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.